In this video, we'll be installing Nginx Proxy Manager on Proxmox. So we have already installed Docker and inside Docker, we'll be creating the Nginx Proxy Manager. So it will be lightweight container that will be only taking care of the reverse proxy. So let me show you how we can do that. We'll get the Docker Compose file. You can see here, these are all the details which are available in the Docker Compose. So I'll be simply copying this and I'll create a Docker Compose YAML file. You can create in any folder, but I have created a folder. So I'll be creating Docker Compose YAML and here I'll be pasting all the content. Simply save this YAML file. And once you have saved it, you will just run the command Docker Compose space up dash D, which is detached mode. It is pulling the image. And you can see here that these are three ports which will be enabled. One will be port 80, one will be port 443, and another will be port 81. 81 is for the admin web port, 80 is for the public HTTP port. All right, so here you can see that my Nginx proxy manager has started now. It is now easy to access as you can see that this particular docker that I had had the IP address of 192.168.240.6 and if I go back here to the console docker space ps here you can see that this particular container which is running is having port 81, port 80 and of course port 443. I can access it by 192.168.240.6. You can see here Nginx proxy manager default web page. In order to access the admin panel, I'll be accessing via port 81. So now I can give my email address. Default is admin at example.com and password is change me. So I'll be using admin and change me. Then I can of course change and save it here. Current password and the new password and save. Now here you can see there is zero proxy host, zero redirected host, zero stream and zero 404 host. So what is the benefit of proxy host? Why we are using Nginx proxy or reverse proxy? You are not exposing your internal application servers to the rest of the world. So we'll be first of all going to the firewall, which is pfSense. I'll be enabling the port here. So I'll go here to firewall and NAT rules. And here I'll be adding port forwarding for WAN IPv4. And here protocol I'll be choosing TCP. The source can be anything. But destination will be WAN address. I'll be choosing the destination port which will be HTTP. Alias is not added but my web server will be 192.168.240.6. Target port is also of course HTTP destination port and redirect port and i'll just save it from van interface whatever is the source address whatever is the source port and destination address is van address and destination port is 80 nat it to 192.168.240.6 and nat it to the port 80 the https port also so i'll be copying this and with http i'll be adding https as well and here also it will be destination port as HTTPS and save it, apply the changes. And here you can see now these both ports, which is port 80 and 443 are exposed. Of course, rest of the port forwarding is not done. Only these two ports are exposed. The first proxy host that I'll be creating will be proxy.syncbricks.com. And how I'll do that, I'm using Cloudflare for this purpose. There are different methods to use the DNS management. In the Cloudflare, I'll be creating a new DNS record, which will be proxy. And here you can see proxy. And here I'll be giving the public IP of this. It will not be proxied here. So I'll simply save it. Now you can see here that this is proxy. And I'll also be creating for Proxmox. And I'll also be creating for PFSense. So I'll add PFSense. And here I'll be giving the IP address. And then I'll be creating another one which will be Proxmox and again I'll be giving the IP address and now you can see here that I have created three records here one is Proxmox one is pfSense and one is proxy now as we have created the DNS record for proxy.syncbricks.com you can see here that it is the nginx proxy manager this is also showing the same page and this is also showing the same page at the same time if I open pfSense.syncbricks.com it is also opening the same and if I open proxmox.syncbricks.com, this is also opening the same page. And if I show you here, my proxmox is 
to colon 8006. This is the Proxmox which is running on HTTPS. And now if you notice here, this traffic is encrypted, but the SSL certificate is not there. Similarly, if I show you PFSense, which is on 192.168.240.1, this is also on HTTPS port. And third is my Nginx proxy manager itself. So now you can see these are the three web servers or three web application. I have already created the DNS record for this. So I'll be creating the proxy host for this. The traffic is already coming to this. So we'll be creating the proxy host here. I'll be adding first proxy host. It will be, for example, I'll create it for Proxmox. So it is proxmox.syncbricks dot com i'll be choosing https because proxmox is already running on https at port 8006 so what i'll do here now i'll add its port 8006 and here will be the ip address which is 192.168.240.2 i'll save it now you can see it is live so if i go back here proxmox.syncbricks.com here you can see i am now on proxmox.syncbricks.com without the port number through the nginx proxy manager now you notice here that there is no ssl certificate of course so i can get the ssl certificate for proxmox via nginx proxy manager of course i have a way i can use the ssl certificate here also so i'll be going back here to nginx proxy manager i'll click here and edit this and i can get the ssl certificate from here another method is that i can directly go here to ssl certificate get the ssl certificate for different domains which are pointing already to this particular proxy manager and then you can use those certificates but this is the way also so i can go here to proxy host click here and edit and now in ssl certificate i'll be choosing request new ssl certificate which will of course get the ssl certificate directly from the let's encrypt i will use these settings as default i will not use anything right now of course i can force the ssl certificate here and i'll agree to the terms and conditions and save now it will get the ssl certificate directly from let's encrypt for 90 days and every 90 days it will automatically renew if i go here to ssl certificates now you can see here that proxmox.syncbricks.com SSL certificate is active and it will be expiring on 17th of March 2024, which is for three months. I'll be going back here uh, to proxmox.syncbricks.com where the SSL certificate was not there. I'll refresh this now. You can see here now the SSL certificate is active on proxmox.syncbricks.com using the Nginx proxy manager. I'm only exposing port 8006, which is web port through Nginx proxy manager. Proxmox is now publicly accessible. I can create another host also now, uh, Nginx proxy manager via proxy.syncbricks.com. So I'll be clicking here on host, proxy host, and I'll add a proxy host, which will be proxy.syncbricks.com. The IP address can be localhost also, but I'll be using 192.168.240.6. I'll be choosing port 81, proxy.syncbricks.com. You can see here that now I'm able to access this application also using proxy.syncbricks.com. So now my Nginx application or Nginx web service is also being exposed and I can also get the SSL certificate for this. So I'll go here, edit this and get the SSL certificate. And here my SSL certificate is force and agree. Now, if I go back here to proxy.syncbricks.com, you can see here that SSL certificate is now active. The traffic is right now encrypted. The PFSense also can be used. In PFSense, there is one challenge that to proxy, you cannot access it. We will still try. I'll be adding a proxy here, which is pfsense.syncbricks.com. And here I'll be using HTTPS because PFSense is also using HTTPS. So here it will be 192.168.240.1. Port right now is 80 and I'll be saving it. Now if I refresh this, here you can see that DNS rebind attack is detected. So it doesn't allow by default rebind. We can configure it using admin portal. You can see that in the PFSense video, I have explained you that. So I can get the SSL certificate for this also. So we'll go here to PFSense, click here, edit SSL and request new SSL certificate, force SSL, agree and save. Now, if I access this again, you can see here that the SSL certificate is also active for PFSense. And of course, you can apply this SSL certificate here 
to pfsense by going here to certificates and you can download in fact this certificate from the nginx proxy manager you will go here to ssl certificates and here for the pfsense you can download it here and then you can apply this ssl certificate to pfsense so i have explained you that in the pfsense ssl certificate video so you can see that but here the whole purpose was to explain you that how nginx proxy manager can work as a reverse proxy not only for your hosts but also for the streams and for the 404 now redirection host is in fact if you are redirecting any specific host to external host now suppose these are the hosts that we created pfsense.synplex.com i will be deleting this instead of using the host i can create the redirection host and this will be pfsense.synplex.com and i'll be auto reforwarding it to proxy.syncbricks.com in redirection host you can mention here that what type of traffic you want to redirect whether it is temporary it is permanent or it is found or not found or see other and all of these redirection HTTP codes can be used i'll be using it for example temporary redirect save it one more thing also you can do that because we already got the ssl certificate so i can also get the ssl certificate here and i can attach that ssl certificate which was pfsense.syncbricks.com and do the force ssl certificate here and now if i go here to pfsense.syncbricks.com you can see here that it has been redirected to proxy.syncbricks.com so this is how the redirection host works so stream is relatively a new feature and this is amazing feature here because the nginx proxy manager can also work as port forwarding so if you are using firewall so you can redirect all the ports to nginx proxy manager and from here you can take care of the port forwarding so streams is similar to port forwarding so http and https traffic is already being taken care of through hosts but in streams you can forward other ports like ftp port or ssh port or even for gaming you have some specific ports or for the sql port or mysql port or any port that you have on your network you can do the forwarding through this stream feature is definitely helping to secure your network so to secure the traffic and here you can enter the forwarding host ip address and the port number of this whether it is tcp or udp you can add both of them and then is the 404 host 404 host is a good way of maintaining the 404 traffic which means that if any page is not found on any of your domain and you want to make sure that this particular nginx proxy manager works as the 404 host where you can have a nice looking 404 page and then any traffic that goes to 404 page will be moved here so it will give a nice and clean look to that so this way you can maintain the 404 hosts also so this was all about the hosts and then we can talk about the access lists in access list you can create the blacklist and whitelist anyone trying to attack you can blacklist if it is known ip address so you can add it to the whitelist so this way you can add the list here so you can name the list you can even add the authorization with the user id and password and here you can see that access whether it is allow or deny so you can do that as well so this way you can add the access list here in ssl certificate you can see all the ssl certificates are here of course you can add custom ssl certificate also in case you have it for example if you are using cloudflare so cloudflare will also generate the ssl certificate which is for 15 years in fact so you can upload those ssl certificates here with the certificate key and certificate these files provided by the cloudflare i have explained you in a different video that how you can get the ssl certificate here is audit log so you can see who has done what all the details are here in setting you can change the default page of this which we were trying to access now for example 192.168.240.6 this is the default page of this and you can change the default page here by clicking here edit and you can make the changes whether it is the configuration page 404 page redirect page or custom page so in custom page you can create your custom page so i have created that using chat gpt so i'll just copy it and paste it here save it here and now if i try to access this again now default page is changed and you can of course visit the website you can of course make the changes to this uh, to meet your specific needs and this is also responsive by the way and you can access it on your smartphone also so it will look same so with this default page all of our setting is completed in nginx proxy manager 
we have been using this for a long time there is traffic also one of the best reverse proxy manager so this was all about nginx proxy manager let us move to the next video now.